Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 video, where today, as we go rounding out the final gauntlets that are within the Rise of the Phoenix DLC, we find ourselves in the level 35 Fight for the Future gauntlet run. This one is akin to the previous two that we have already covered within this series, where it is a three-phase gauntlet, and in this gauntlet, when you run it through for the very first time, you will be able to unlock Cable as a playable character within your roster. So let's run through what you need to be aware of in each of the three phases of the gauntlet, as well as the four different clear reward conditions that you will need to keep in mind as you run through this. So the first section involves a fight against Nebula and Ronan, and the quirk with this fight is that it does require you to deal all of your meaningful damage with your extreme attacks, but they do recharge at an extremely accelerated rate. Everything else is going to take or deal less damage, and the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that the hazards from the danger room or the danger room hazards that are included in this segment are the gravity orbs that are ejected out across the arena. Now, with Thanos here, he's uh, I'm not doing super great with targeting him where he needs to be. I was trying to get some cheap and easy damage in against Ronan to accelerate the extreme attack gauge. But you can see here that danger room hazard, it throws those gravity orbs which draw you towards it in three separate directions at a variance of 180 degrees between the three. And the reason why I'm detonating some of my extreme attacks a little further away from Ronan than what I otherwise normally would is due to the fact that we will be going over in a little bit that where that will make a bit more sense. But all things considered, with Ronan here, you've just got to lay into him until you have your extreme attacks online and then unleash those suckers as soon as he is in a vulnerable position. Granted, as long as you can land two or maybe three of your extreme attacks on him, you're going to be just fine in terms of being able to take him and Nebula out. That brings us into the second section of this gauntlet, which involves a fight against Ultron and a bunch of little grunts, a couple of Kree soldiers, Primarily, though there are a couple of other opponents that make their way in here. And the quirk with this fight is you deal increased damage with your ability and synergy attacks, so keep that in mind as you face off against these different characters. As soon as you have Ultron down, he will that will prompt the spawn of Maximus, and there are a couple of the Ultron Grunt soldiers that come in here as well. But with your extreme attacks and synergies there, you're going to do really well to take these characters out. The odd thing here is that sometimes the game gets a little confused and just runs out the time for a little bit longer. But uh, the other thing that I saw that was kind of odd is typically that attack with Thanos Infinite locks the characters in place. And Maximus was still able to move around while he was imprisoned within that orb. The third and final stretch of this gauntlet is going to involve a face-off against Cable, and that is a pretty straightforward fight, all things considered. There's nothing super tedious about this fight. One thing you should keep in mind is there are a couple of different danger room hazards that will come in here. Of course, there is the piston that drops down from the ceiling on top of your team which can be quite annoying as it staggers you out of even your attack animation startup. But the other thing you need to be cautious of is an additional danger room hazard, which is an electrical storm rather than an electrical wave that we've seen with some of the other ones. So I find that one a little less annoying than some of the other danger room hazards that we've seen. But now that you know what to expect with the three different phases of that gauntlet, let's talk about the four different clear conditions that you will need to pay attention to in order to claim the full rewards from this. Of course, like any gauntlet that we have ever or will ever look at, you do claim the first set of rewards by clearing out the content of the gauntlet itself which is just making sure that you go through those three. You can get it on a cold read very easy, uh, provided that you have a semi-decent team. As a matter of fact, bringing in characters that you ran the original story quest with is going to be more than sufficient for running 
this first phase of these gauntlets. The second condition that you need to be aware of is what I had alluded to a little bit earlier, where you're going to need to destroy 15 or more hazard devices or some of those danger room traps that are located in these different sections here. So do try to focus those down whenever and wherever you can, though it is important to note that the piston that drops down in that third phase of the gauntlet is not a hazard that you can take out with your uh, any of your attacks. It just kind of comes and goes. But the other ones, such as the... Uh, flame one that's present here, the gravity ones that are present in the first one, and then the electric one that's present in the final stretch. All of those are fair game when it comes to taking out those hazards and progressing towards that clear condition goal. The third criteria actually takes a little bit longer. So the destroying 15 or more hazard devices, if you're focusing on them, you can take them down in a two single or two different runs back through the gauntlets available. The third and fourth clear conditions you'll actually need to run a little bit longer in order to get the full benefits there. Uh, the third of which is defeating 50 powerful enemies, which yes, the mini boss characters you face off against do count towards that total, but you also reap those characters by attacking into the different grunts that spawn in as well. You'll also see that here, like I mentioned in the previous section, there is a bit of some weird stuff that's going on, and we've got another flame ring that's popped up here in the center. And I don't know why we needed to take that out in order to move on from this section, but that's, I guess, what was required from it. Then, as we come into the last little section, the other thing you need to be aware of is earning a score of 300,000 or more. Of course, with that 300,000 score that you are needing to accumulate you're really just going to need to run it enough times until you can get a score that suffices with what you're looking for but it's pretty straightforward once you know what you're looking for and what legs of that quest will allow you to get that score in a relatively short amount of time for me it took two full runs and then one additional uh, stretch of a gauntlet or just that first phase once more in order to get those three stages but again this is a pretty entry level one so it's nothing that you should really be too concerned about when it comes to reaping the full rewards from this one but that is going to do it for today's video we will be back on friday with the final installment of the phase one gauntlets within the rise of the phoenix dlc and we're back to, again tomorrow with another Minecraft video. So thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe for more daily content. And I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.